It's coming up April 15th, U.S. Tax Day. Among other things, that's the day that the Stockholm International Research Institute releases its annual report on world military spending. The number is always mind-blowing, but what to do? To back up, for the last few years, the Stockholm reports revealed that the world spends about one and three quarter trillion dollars on war. Weapons, planes, bombs, drones. The number is nowhere near complete, because how could you really tally the cost of lifetime care for the wounded and war scarred, for example, or the lost time and attention we could have paid to other things? The Stockholm number's low, but still, tax day is a good day to release it because it reminds us that we are making choices here. Could we think of a better way to spend one and three quarter trillion? A couple of years ago, the global campaign on military spending invited people to share their ideas and they came up with plenty. Bernie Sanders had talked about some of them, like free college on the campaign trail. But that's the easy part, how to get there. In reality, we're talking about nations that are armed to the teeth and rivals for resources and power. How could they ever come together to act for a greater good, especially if it came at a cost to their pocketbook, you say? Well, they could because they have. We had an example just this year. Remember back to the dead of winter when oil prices were falling and demand was faltering, people were talking about an economic slowdown? Deep in the heart of it, Iran and Saudi Arabia, two rival oil producers and bitter adversaries cut a deal. They had severed diplomatic relations over the war in Syria. They were fighting a proxy war in Yemen. Short of actually shooting at each other, it's hard to imagine worse relations between two countries. And yet there they were, brought together by collapsing commodity prices. The Saudis had already cut a deal with Russia. To stabilize oil prices and preserve profits, warring nations were able to step up and stop the bleeding. It worked for a bit, but that's not my main point. If the nations of the world can do it for oil, wouldn't you think they could do it for blood? Find out more at lauraflanders.com. You can find our podcast there, and you can write to me. Tell me what you think. Laura at lauraflanders.com.